Hi, uh, my name is Jung Hun Bae. I'm an assistant professor of church history in the Department of Theology in uh, Goshen University in South Korea. I really appreciate IEF for inviting me to give my lecture. Today, I want to talk about an Eastern Church Father in 4th century, John Chrysostom's idea on almsgiving and, and the cure of the soul. In recent years, much scholarly work has been exploded on the topic of John's appropriation of Asian psychagogy. David Rilardstam investigated John's use of adaptation which was one of the essential psychological techniques in the Asian philosophical oratorical tradition. Asian philosophers argue that the physicians of the soul should suitably adapt their therapeutic method for each state of the soul. Lalalstam demonstrates that this psychological principle consistently occurs in John's theology and his homiletical method. Wendy Meyer argues that John was a holistic therapist and his homily was a key therapeutic tool. She also identified the genre of John's works such as On God's Providence and that no one is harmed by anyone except themselves as Christianized philosophical, medical treatise and uh, therapy. In these recent studies, however, relatively little attention has been devoted to John's approach to almsgiving in relation to the therapy of the soul. Given the fact that John repeatedly returns to the topic of almsgiving in his corpus, it is essential to explore how almsgiving in his thought is related to the cure of the soul. The purpose of this lecture is to take a closer look at John's view of almsgiving and soul therapy within the context of Asian philosophical therapy. This paper places John's homiletical theory on Matthew at each analytic center. Since more than half of those homilies are concerned directly with poverty, wealth, and almsgiving, the homilies are, are crucial in understanding John's approach to almsgiving. In our discussion, we first consider the, uh, the question of a disease of the soul. After dealing with the nature of sickness of the soul, we move to examination of the role of almsgiving as a spiritual remedy. Chrysostom identified passions as the disease of the soul by employing the language of a bodily disease. We see this approach to passions in Asian philosophers. Seneca states that avarice and ambition are long-standing and hardened false judgment, and these vices are the sickness of the soul. John refers to greed, vainglory, and earthly as the disease of the soul, which uh, threaten spiritual health. Greed is also compared to fever. Those who suffer from this fever desire to acquire more wealth, even though wealth aggravates the state of the soul. Pride is sickness and tumor. Describing the sick soul of a person in power, 
John states that the soul sways like an inflated bladder and has dropsy and plenty of inflammation. In addition to terms of somatic diseases, John described sin as a psychic disease by using the language of a mental illness as well. Greek Roman philosophers likewise regard passions as the mental illness. Cicero identified passions as the agitated state of the soul and calls this state madness. Criticizing those enslaved to their belly, John calls gluttony folly. Vainglory is frenzy and madness. It is the most tyrannical passion of all because it destroys the benefit of good works such as fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. In Matthew 58, John deals with the characteristics of an arrogant man. The man sees himself surpassing all and thinks it's shameful to live with other people. Chrysostom considers uh, this man as in the state of madness. In the course of his uh, pathological analysis of greed, in Matthew 20, John presents the ideology, the sickness of the soul, emphasizing the role of the mind or uh, rational faculty. For John, a psychological disease is born out of the loss of control of mind over passion. In John's anthropology, the mind not only leads us to remove, remove ignorance and to make like judgment, but also kicks down wicked desires. If, however, the mind is weakened, it cannot take control of, of passions and this disordered condition causes psychic uh, tranquility to break. John often explains this etiology of psychic disease by employing the platonic metaphor of the chariot of the soul, which appears in Plato's Piedros. In Piedros, Plato divides the soul into a three parts, the rational, spirit, the appetitive parts. The rational, spirit, and appetitive parts are related mainly to the rational faculty, emotional responses, and essential biological instincts respectively. Comparing the whole soul to a chariot, region to a charioteer, and the other two parts to horses, Plato argues that the charioteer should hold fast the reins of the horses. In particular, the driver should hold fast the rein of the appetitive horse to such an extent as to drench each jaw with blood to tame it, because it is exceedingly suborn and rebellious, unlike the other horse which is obedient to the driver. For Plato, the health of the soul depends ultimately on the control of desires. Appropriating this Plato Platonic metaphor, John also argued for the control of the other two parts of the soul by the rational part. If the rational part controls both the spirit and appetitive parts, the soul is healthy. The soul is healthy. If, however, these two parts are not controlled by the mind, 
the soul is disease. In this sense, the imbalance of soul brings about psychic diseases. Severely criticize those going to hippodrome. John diagnosed this imbalance of their sick, sick souls as follows. Quote, if we want to see the race of the animal, why didn't you yoke the irrational passions within you, temper and desire, and put on them the yoke of, of philosophy, which is useful and light, and set over them like legion? End quote. We show that for John, Passions are the disease of the soul. Then, how do we cure passions? John's answer is almsgiving. Almsgiving is presented as a psychic remedy for curing the sick soul. John's therapeutic strategy of almsgiving belongs to the tradition of behavior therapy in Asian psychagogy. Richard Sorby provide a variety of examples of behavior therapy uh, practiced by Asian philosophers. Socrates' attempt to lower his voice, uh, smile, and soften his gaze whenever he got irritated with his friends. Seneca looked at himself in a mirror to avoid anger. As a behavior remedy, almsgiving has two kinds of functions, reactive and preventive treatment. Like medicine, Asian philosophical therapy had these two functions. We first look at reactive treatment through a few, few examples. Almsgiving mitigates or remove passions when they are aligned. As a result, givers regain the peace of mind. In Matthew Amalie Force, John deals with, with the cure of the anger. First, he examines the inner state of an angry person. According to Asian philosophical therapy, therapeutic process began with the analysis of psychic illness. The patient contracts the disease of internal organs and consequently cannot perform any act of virtue. Comparing anger to a parasite and serpent, John claims that it penetrates the entrails of the soul and totally destroys them. Almsgiving kills psychic entrails by killing the worm and serpent of anger. John, John provides almsgiving as a liquid anaerobic medicine. In this homily, the therapeutic function of almsgiving is described in pharmaceutical terms. The patient needs to drink the liquid spiritual parasite side to remove the parasite. The blood of Christ and preaching are also presented as a spiritual parasite side that complement almsgiving. John frequently suggests many different kinds of psychic remedies at the same time. On the basis of examination, the suitable methods of therapy are prescribed for each disease, and the combination of various therapy maximizes the curative effect. According to uh, Matthew Homily 20, almsgiving removes uh, 
greed. Castigating the greedy, John asserts that greed is an evil humor and uh, makes their spiritual eyes uh, blind. There are several symptoms of this spiritual blindness. First, the greedy are too enslaved by earthly things such as money, earthly, and gains to see heavenly things. Like a dog bound a tomb, they bark at those coming near to them to keep what they own. Chrysostom argues that they are worse than any slave since they voluntarily give up their noblesse and uh, liberty, which are the essential characteristics of humanity, and serve the most grievous tyranny, that is, that is greed. Second, the greedy are exceedingly afraid of losing a small amount of their wealth. John elucidates this symptom by using a characteristic of the blind. The blind fear what those who have sight do not fear due to their sight disability. Just as they are scared of a small loop, suppose me that it is, a, it is a snake. So the greedy fear the loss of their wealth. Even some of the greedy commit suicide, not endure this ill fortune. Lastly, the greedy do not spend their money on what they should do. The greedy are compared to theater actors. Theater actors perform dangerous circus acts such as walking on the rope on the stage but do nothing when their courage should be displayed. In the same way, the greedy lavish their money on pleasure whereas they are stingy with caring for the poor. According to John, showing the self-discipline at the necessary moment is the most shame. Almsgiving leads to the recovery of spiritual sight by removing greed as evil humor. In a curative process, Christ's promise of reward motivates the patient to take almsgiving as their spiritual remedy. The promise of reward is based on Matthew 6.20 Store up for yourself treasures in heaven. John stresses that the reward is related to those very things that the greedy desire most. And almsgiving is a way to achieve these desires. He argues that if if the, if the greedy store up their riches in heaven by means of almsgiving, their ways not only will be kept in safety, but also will be greatly increased and they will enjoy their wealth. In addition to reactive treatment, almsgiving also prevents spiritual illness by strengthening the soul. As benefactors become wise, they can avoid passions. John insisted that almsgiving is the fruit, the olive, which is health-giving food and strengthens the soul. John's mention of olive shows that in late antiquity, olives are considered as health food for maintaining the healthy body. They are also made into oil. Since olives are highly nutritious, Nestler consumes them 
to improve their muscle power. 그래서 some points out that the soul needs daily nourishment much more than the body. Unless uh, it is well nourished, it will become weaker and even perish. The only what I'm giving provides enough nourishment to the soul and make it healthy and strong. John states that the olive enlarges the soul and enriches it and making noble and beautiful. Of special interest is that the sinews of the soul are strengthened by almsgiving. Givers do not suffer from any psychological illness due to the effect of health-giving almsgiving. If someone keeps eating this spiritual food, the soul will stay healthy. Quote, a person who practices showing pity to the needy will stand quickly away from covetousness. A person who perseveres in giving to the poor will stand quickly away from anger, will never be put it up by pride. For just as when a physician is continuously caring for the wound, he readily girded himself as he observed human nature in the misfortunes of others. So also, if we engage in giving assistance to the poor, we shall readily become truly wise and thus shall not admire wealth and shall not consider any possessions of this life important, but will despise them all. End. Up to now, we have analysis, uh, analyzed the laws of almsgiving in John's care of the soul within the context of philosophical therapy. For John, passions are psychic disorder. Passions are not only psychological disease, wounds, and tumors, but also madness. They break a piece of mind and destroy the soul in the end. Spiritual illness is born out of malfunction of the mind, and thus the mind is the pivot in the health of the soul. Armsgiving, which is behavior therapy, heals the sickness of the soul. John prescribed armsgiving as a reactive therapy for a number of different kinds of psychic diseases. It cures not only each passion, but also a variety of passions at the same time. In some cases, the cognitive shift of therapeutic logoi and the promise of reward are suggested in the curative process of the soul. Armsgiving as a function as pre a preventive treatment which strengthen the soul and its immune system. For John, almsgiving is a crucial remedy for healing the sick soul. Thank you very much.